What a nightmare journey that was. An hour and a half journey has taken us five hours. Me and him, what a nightmare. Right, van's parked up, or I've managed to park it. Barra's all loaded up, he's ready. Welcome to this week's vlog. Finally managed to get the rods out. It's dark o'clock now, as you can see. Here he is, and a little moan up. It's, what's the time? 20 to 10. We've just sat down after getting the brolly up. Look, just a ground sheet on, nothing else. He's having a little donder around, look at him, look. He's having a little munch up, a little slurp of water. Yeah, what a nightmare journey. M25 close between junction 8 and 9. If you're watching this and you remember it, if you're stuck in it, I feel your pain. I had to go all the way through bloody Gatwick Airport and Guildford or whatever the bloody places are called, Dorking and Farnham and oh, it's just traffic clock it was. It was a nightmare. But we finally got here and just about managed to get the rods out just on dark a few hours back. Sorted the bivvy out in the dark, got everything sorted and done and that, and we haven't even had a bloody cup of tea yet. Look at him, look, he's having a little snorzel around. You can hear the duck, look, he's in the bag. Look, he's having a little, trying to get in the bag. Oh, look. He knows he's got a little present now. This, wait, look, this, right, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This, was given to me at the big one show by a guy called Simon Ward. So thank you, look, here he goes, look, he's loving that. But the only problem is, it makes a proper racket. So I'm gonna have to, it makes a proper racket. He's gonna rip that a bit. So thank you, Simon Ward, for giving that to me at the big one show. So I've given it to him, and he's having a proper chunk on it, look. Look, look he's loving it. He's loving it, isn't he, look. Look him go with it, it's just when that noise, when that squeak. He's proper having a little munch up, isn't he? Look. Look at him have a little munch up. Look at him go. So thanks Simon for that. He's really loving that and enjoying that. Oh, can you hear it? Did you hear it? Let's go. I'm trying to get a good look. Look. He's making a noise. <laughs> he's, he's proper trying to rip it to bits, look. That's going to do my nut. I'm going to have to hide that Simon now, and I? But here he goes. But yeah, so I'm going to get the tea on. A cup of tea. First cup of tea. Take that bloody thing away from him. So all he's going to be doing is making loads of noise with it. Look. Oh, that's going. He's going to have to... Oh, look, he's in, look, he's in, look. He's in. He's got to have it. He's got to have it. He's got to make as much noise as he can. Everyone else is going to go mental on the lake, aren't they? Right. See you in the morning. I'm going to have a cup of tea. See you soon, guys. Well, as you can see, it's a little bit dark and cloudy, it's spitting with rain. He's awake, look. He's up and about as well this morning. He's up at just the first light. Banged that kettle on. Well, actually, we had a, a proper percolated cup of real strong rocket fuel coffee, as I like to call it. Nothing like on the bank percolate coffee to give you that little boost to get up out of bed when it's cold or it's wet or whatever so we've looking this morning but we have been looking and we haven't seen a diggy bird although last night about half past one i had to get up out of my bed because i had a liner I thought it was a bite it was that vicious a liner I went straight up the top straight back down again and i thought it was actually a bite so that was on a real close in rod that's the middle rod here I've got them positioned. I've got one out towards the island, a little hard patch. The other one's the one I had the line on's out there about 40 yards, and that one out there is about 30 yards to the right. So all to play for as they say. Pork chops out, look at him. Here he is. Here's the old pork chop out and about this morning. So yeah, quiet night, managed to get them out in the dark, ping them out. Rest of snipe, pinged out the normal three hinge stiffies, two whites and a pink again. A few casts to get them right, all three went down for donk, so we were happy with that. We're just going to leave them for the time being. 
It's really, really busy, the lake. I'm really surprised. I think there's about 12 or 13 people on. It's the most busiest. What is he doing in there? Look. Ah, oh, he wants. I know what he wants. I know. Look. Look. He's having a turn. Look, he's having a turn. Look. He wants. He wants to get. Look. He knows where his little treats are. Look. Look at him getting in there. Look at him. Little sod, isn't he? I we'll have to sort his treats out in a minute. But yeah, I've been up watching. You've got, it's a good little vantage point from this swim. I haven't fished it since last year. But you can see all of the lake out there, everything is moving. There's a bit of a cold wind on there. It's going to get warmer later on, but it's going to be overcast, dark, and spitting with rain all day. And out here, you can see this end of the lake. So it's a good vantage point, but I'm not going to be able to move on or anything because there's people in swims everywhere. Right. I'm just going to sit and watch for a bit longer and sort him out before he has an absolute turn. Look, look at him, look. Before he has an absolute bloody me mental breakdown because he can't get to his treats. All right, all right, all right, all right. I'll get you one in a minute. Hang on, hang on. So, <clears throat> yeah, we're going to see how to, there's no point moving because there's nowhere to move to. And I have not seen a dicky bird all morning. Right, I'm going to go and sort him out before he has a meltdown. And I'll catch you soon. Welcome back. Pretty uneventful morning, apart from a pike. I've just had a pike on a pink pop-up, took the hook bait and everything it did. And it come off just uh, as I was about to net it. So, they're a little bit active, the old pike. I haven't seen anything, but that wind's starting to blow down here. Lovely now. I re-got the rod out, retied another hook bait on there, sharpened up the hook, because it was all right. It was bent over a little bit, but used a sharpening tool, sharpened it right up. So it's pristine again. And banged it out, 30 yards out, over, over in that direction over there, a little hard spot. So we're all rocking and rolling. Rods are on the dance floor again. A couple of things I want to talk about is about my spring fishing. A couple of essentials, not things that I like to take or whatever, but it's two things to me which are essential at any time of the year, but especially spring. First one is the old Polaroids. If you haven't got a set of polarized, get yourself a set of polarized. Get up the trees, look around, look in snags. It'll take the glare off the water as well. When you're looking out now, I'm looking out, out there, and it just, if something shows in the distance or wherever, it's taking that glare, reflecting off the water into my eyes. I've got it up like that, I can still see, but it's a little bit more difficult. So, with the polaroids on, it's not only for looking under snags and up trees and looking for fish cruising by, it's for a distance as well, because it takes that glare off, especially when the sun starts coming out a bit more as we go further into spring. But get yourself a set, Calder do a set. These are the Fortis wraps. I've been told Calder are good. Also ESP, you can get them from a tenner up to a hundred quid. Whatever suits your budget, but get yourself a decent pair. they work for you and you won't never look back. It's one of the first things I pick up. If I've put all my gear around to swim, and I've left my Polaroids in the van, I will go back and get them. They're that important to me. Second essential bit of kit, which I don't see many people, if any, one or two throughout the season using, is the old bins, the old binoculars. Again, if you're sitting there, fish don't always show. But if you've got a flat calm lake, or you're looking out, like, look, for instance now, look, you can see on there, it's where the wind's blowing from left to right, You've got a, a clear area at the back there. Now, yes, you might be able to see the fish if it shows out there, but what happens if they're not showing and they're just feeding? They're kicking up the bottom. Little bubbles are coming up. Get yourself a set of binoculars. Anywhere from about 50 quid, I suppose, or you might get a cheaper pair, up to a couple of hundred quid. These ones, I got these many years ago. Eight by 26, they are. Eight by 26. But I'm sure if you go into a camera shop or a hunting shop or something like that, they'll be able to advise you on the perfect ones. But 8x26, I've found, works for me. Get yourself a set of those as well, because they're invaluable. Just imagine if you want to move swims. You've seen a fish show, you want to move swims. But you can't tell if someone's in there. 
binoculars on it, you can sort of get a better gauge of if anyone's in that area. Or if a fish shows in any sort of area, I mean, look out there, look, that's got to be about 400, 500 yards across there. If you've got a fish showing in the margins, I mean, my eyesight's not too bad, but I might miss it. If I've got the binoculars on, or I see something tip over, I've got the binoculars on it, and it goes, shows again, I can see it, can't I? And you can see things like where the ducks are diving. You know, the nature can tell you so much just by watching them and what they're doing. Where the grebes are going through, the channels, the silk gullies, you know, where the diving ducks are diving, the black chickens and all that. You can tell if bait's been out there or not, or if they're coming up with bait in their mouth. It's an essential bit of kit. Get yourself a set, definitely. Right, they're the two essentials that I use, but something else that I know you, if you've been following my vlogs for quite a while, is I like to take the temperature to see what it is. Now someone contacted me, I apologise, I can't remember your name, but they said, have a look at this electric temperature gaze. It's about seven quid off eBay. I'll put the link down, as I always do with things. It takes two double, uh, triple A, the real small ones. Get it off eBay. I thought, well, why not? Give it a go. And all it does is you just point it towards the water. And it takes a reading off the top of the water. So that says 10.7, 10.9. You've got a bit of sun. Don't forget, those top layers of the water is going to be the warmest. So you're not getting a proper temperature it's going to give you a rough idea so pointing it to it yeah pointing it again hold it down and it's saying 11.3 which is the surface layer now if i look at my other temperature gauge it says 9.4 so I, and that's in the margin so i know there's a degree or two difference so this will give you a rough idea without having to get your temperature gauge out just by pointing at it 11 Look, I'll show you, look, 11.3, all you do is you hold down that, you can point at anything, tree, the air, and it gives you an air temperature as well, just by pointing it around, you can point it at the old carp dog, point it at him, in there, he's well toasted at 19 degrees underneath the bag, but yeah, you know, it's something which I'm going to work with and see if it's how good it is and if it works properly, but you know, it's just another little gadget that may work in your favour rather than getting a temperature gauge for six, seven quid, or might even be a fiver actually, of eBay. You can point it at the water, a little infrared light, bounces, bounces back, I think, how it works, and it gives you a rough estimate of what the temperature is. So there's that little bit of kit. Check it out, put the link down, make up your own mind. But yeah, so what's happening with the fishing front? Well, the wind's changed around. It's blowing a westerly now, it's blowing down lovely, absolutely. It feels nice and warmish on my back. We've got lots of rain coming. It's gonna stay about seven degrees tonight. It's about it's time two o'clock, we've got about four hours till dark. It's gonna stay warm tonight, lots of rain. Hopefully, it may get them fish moving. No one's seen anything. I've spoke to a couple of guys, they've come and seen me in the old pork chop, who's in there. Hasn't moved. Oh, apart from when I had a little rustle of the uh, of me, of, of a, what's it, a bag of uh, biscuits. Oh mate, the snozzle was out straight away. He, he's like, how can you even hear it underneath all that, half asleep? All I did was actually rustle the Tesco's bag like that, boom, I feel this movement. And he's up there between my legs, looking at me to say, where's mine? So of course you have to give him half a one. He's not stupid, is he? So yeah, I've recast that middle rod. I'm going to leave the other two there. I don't think I'm going to cast them. They went down just on dark last night. Perfect donks. I'm just going to leave them. You know, they went all right. I'm not fishing very far out, so I don't want to disturb the water. Now, hopefully, if there's any fish that were on the wind before, they're going to move down. Change of wind, undercurrent's different, moving the temperatures around. Water temperature's gone up, as we've seen. <coughs> and it might spur them in with a bit of rain coming, oxygenate the water you know, having a feed or at least seeing some. I'm gonna stay up late tonight, listen out, watch, drink plenty of cups of tea, see how long I can stay awake for, and I'll be up early in the morning, even though I'm going tomorrow, I'm still gonna be up early, first light like I was this morning, because when I come down next week for a night or two, it give me a starting point if I don't see anything. Where were they the week before? Right, so that's where we're at. 
I'm going to get that ever faithful kettle on and I'll catch you soon. Right. Welcome back. Not a lot else to report, unfortunately. A couple of visitors, spoke to them, they haven't seen anything either. Now, I think up there there's a little entrance that goes into like what we call the small lake. That's where I think the fish are, possibly. But as it's about to absolutely pour down, look at that sky. That is going to absolutely pelt it down. And the wind started pushing up here a bit more. I'm going to stay put. Plus, we've got a little treat for the old, a bit of, bit of different cuisine for change. Rather than we've, we've gone a bit out of the box tonight. Because Mrs B, unfortunately, didn't get me anything to take with me, bless her. Which wasn't her fault, she was working and I was working. I had to pick something up at Tesco's, which is always a bad thing to do. Tesco Express. So we're going for... Sod the... <laughs> we're going for finest beef steak burgers. In the rolls. With the old salad. Let's pick, look. I've dropped it so he's on it. Diet's totally out the window. Got some sauce to go on it, but I thought, sod it, why not? Let's treat myself to a special burger and uh, yeah, have something a little bit nice and fattening for a change. But um, right, yeah, look at that, it looks absolutely beautiful. Look at that, look at that sky, look. That sky out there, look. How beautiful is that? Look at that. And they wonder why we go fishing, eh? They wonder why we go fishing. He knows why we go fishing. He loves it. He loves the uh, area and the wildlife and the food that I give him. And he likes being out. Look, he's tangled himself up around the tree. Now he's stuck. Watch him, watch, look. Look. He's not be able to do anything in a minute. He's tangled himself up so much around that bloody tree. He's just gonna wrap himself up, look. Come round, go round, come back round this way, come back round this way, look. That's better, God, give me strength. Oh, bloody, almost, almost, almost stacked it, that would have been good with the camera going in the bloody wall, wouldn't it? Almost stacked the bloody thing then, God. So yeah, look at that, beautiful. About half an hour for a dog. Rod's all sorted, we're all on the spots. All we can do now is just hope something happens because we haven't seen anything and it's been rather slow. But, what can you do? It's called fishing for a reason. It's not called catching, isn't it? And you've just got to keep on keeping on. That's what I was going to tell you. Next way, I managed to get hold of one of these, look. Let me have a look. I've got a couple of new things to show you in the next vlog. I managed to, because I know you guys have been asking. The Ridge Monkey Quad Stove. So we're going to start using that over the next couple of weeks. And to do a little review on it as we're fishing like look at him he's done it again he's gone through the wrong way to get himself all wrapped up come around here i'm sure he does it on purpose but when i'm filming i'm sure he does it on purpose when i'm filming. oh he wants to go that way now look come back here he does it on purpose it's like hang on a minute i want to be on the camera i'm going to wrap myself up so you have to put me on the camera God, it does look nice out there, doesn't it? Right, I'm gonna get me dinner ready. I'm gonna have me burgers in a roll with salad and a bit of uh, tomato ketchup or something and watch and look and listen and hopefully we'll see one, even better see one in the bottom of the old net. Would be even better, wouldn't it? But wishful thinking possibly. Right, see you soon. Well, I just had to share the sunset with you. Look how beautiful it looks out there. It is stunning, isn't it? It is beautiful. Still haven't seen nothing. 10 past seven, dark o'clock, just setting the old sun. And I thought, oh, was that a fish then? No, I think that was the ducks. Pum pum time for the ducks. Look at that sunset, look. Beautiful out there. Dark and moody, over the rods. Have a look over the rods. 
Oh, pull chops out. Look at that there. Don't that look beautiful, doesn't it, eh? Look how lovely that looks. Got to see something tonight, haven't we, eh? Got to see something. Something's got to happen, surely. Sure, look at that, look. Look how beautiful it is. Look at out there, look. Look at that sky. Got to see something show, haven't we? Got to. Well, I'm going to get the kettle on again. I think it's time the time lapse. morning. As you can see from the weather, it's absolutely pouring. Hence why I'm underneath the brolly filming this morning. Very quiet night, as it was the night before. Not seen a beam, no liners, just that pike for our troubles last 48 hours. There he is, look. He's all tucked away underneath the brolly with me. Got about an hour to go before we got to pack up. Camera's steaming up. But we've still got a chance, and we'll be back next week. We'll be having a look at the Ridge Monkey Jewel Stove and a couple of other bits and pieces. So don't forget, if you like these type of videos, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, hit that bell notification icon, and we'll see you for the next vlog.